thinking, who is that guy? He's so cool. And is that a job or is he really that person? Or is that actually, is that a job? And then and seeing Ferris Bueller's and seeing a boy drive the, my favourite car in the world, having the day off school. Then I realised that that's, that was a, um, a job that you could, pot, you could do and earn a living from. I had the poster of a Ferrari Testarossa, Porsche 911 and a Lamborghini Countach and then Cindy Crawford. So that's three, three cars. cars. That's three cars and Cindy, yeah. But what do you drive now? An old Austin Healey. It's like, it's an Austin Healey Sprite. It's like a miniature version of that Ferrari California. So when I bought, when I originally had one about 10 years ago, it was my pretend being Ferris Bueller. And I can't to get now. Would be a, um, is the car that the guy, the Magnum, Magnum is what I used to watch. I used to love. That was the American show that I really enjoyed. Right. Magnum PI. Yeah. Those Ferraris, that's what, you know, they look like a piece of cheese. They look really cool now. I always loved them. They were my favourite. What other shows did I like? What was your favourite? Oh, and part? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks was my. Ah. The original Twin Peaks had a peculiar Memphis Belle girlfriend, arm around the neck, used to make, dress me up as sort of. Um, I wanted to be a businessman in a, in a show. <laughs> I used to dress up in a suit and a tie and sit behind a desk with a pretend telephone. So I thought that was cool. With my How picture of my you? Ferrari behind me <laughs> and Cindy. <laughs> And with a pretend keyboard, because we didn't have computers then. I don't know, I may have been about 18. <laughs> she didn't really like that persona. So then I think she wanted me to be a um, uh, thingy from The Cure. Robert Smith? Robert Smith. So she back home my hair, put me in makeup. But I still looked too young to get into the local nightclub. So then she'd dress me in girls' clothes. Then I would get into the nightclub. But then I started quite liking that. And that actually felt more cool than being the businessman. Preach came about looking um, for something at that time that was different and getting a bit um, uninspired. Was by Seth. Seth Rogen, yeah, was the creator of it's his, his Seth Rogen and Evan, his producing partner. They've been they've been trying to adapt this comic book into a show for years and years. Yeah. The comic book I had heard of it. I wasn't really a comic kid, but um, I always remember there was always a comic. Uh, brother. Everyone always had a brother who wore leather jackets and had a lot of piercings and would only <laughs> and would, would never come out of their bedroom. And I remember we used to break into that particular boy's bedroom and I remember seeing that as a kid. I saw one of the front covers which is so beautifully illustrated. Um, and I saw this head looking back at me from one of the comics and it, I recognised the sort of demonic, demented psychotic person staring back at my face and thought, that's, I recognise him, that's what was myself. I met Seth, he had huge hair at the time and a massive beard and there was smoke everywhere and he was trying to explain to me this show that they were going to make that they thought maybe I'd be great at that was going to be about people with just assholes as faces and, <laughs> and people that would just sort of eat, just sort of have sex with meat and um, I was sitting there going, oh. Yeah, and no, I'm not sure I want anything to do with this. This is not for me, thanks. But actually afterwards, I'd obviously smoked, inhaled so much of what they were having <laughs> that I was mesmerised and, yeah, signed up straight away. <laughs> and I'm not regretting it. I hate birthdays. It's just it's pressure. It's the pressure of it being good or, it be, or having... I, I was thinking about it on the planet because I'm about to have a big one. Ah. Not a party. There's just a big birthday that's actually terrifying me really soon. It's really soon. Are you going to have a I've done nothing to prepare for it. It's probably the day I finish the job, so I'll just be sort of finishing landing at five in the morning in London. It'll be raining and I won't have organised anything. And that, yeah, that'll be it. My first kiss, well, it was either... Oh, no, I mustn't say that. The romantic version is behind, in a beautiful place called the um, Secret Garden in Greenwich Park, with a few people, which is just below the um, Meridian Line and where time began. Wow. That sounds quite good, doesn't it? And but the reality was in the cinema with Memphis Bell. This was show, this shows one's age. I think Memphis Bell was what we were watching, and that terrible pain of sitting through a movie for an, at least an hour before you managed to put your arm round the back and over the shoulder and lurch over. Oh God, it's still painful. <laughs> so I don't know whether that was really a kiss. That may have just been a rejection. It's just so awful. I mean, not the kiss, just the, the whole, the lead up, the pain, the pain, the pain of getting the arm over, <laughs> the pain of getting my leg over. <laughs> so I'm going to stick with the, um, 
the uh, secret garden in Greenwich Park. And how was that kiss? Heavenly. Oh, good. <laughs>